Americans are living longer than ever, and if we are prepared for the future, we can lessen the burden on our family and ensure that we are receiving optimal care. The preparation process can be a daunting task and requires careful consideration for all parties involved. If you're not currently going through this, it's almost certain you know someone who is. Throughout this series, you will get the tools to best support your aging family members and their caregivers with compassion and dignity, all while empowering them to make the best choices. When a loved one shows signs of forgetfulness, if they aren't making sense like they used to, or they are neglecting their own care, it can be hard for that person or the family to accept that they are suffering from a memory impairment illness. Usually, the person suffering is the last to know and it can be hard on other family members to understand what's happening and properly react. The illness directly affects one person and indirectly affects many people. In this segment, you'll be provided with resources to care with compassion, patience, and most importantly, the knowledge to navigate the logistics during this stressful time. You know, Susan, I hate to talk about your mother like this, but lately she's been doing some really crazy things. <laughs> like what? It's not funny. The other day she left the stove on and went to the hairdresser. On top of that, she loses her keys everywhere she goes. Mm -hmm. She doesn't take her heart medicine. On top of that, I had to tell her that she hadn't showered for a few days, and she was upset by that, but she changed the subject. I'm really getting worried. She may walk off sometimes, she'll disappear. And what happens if she takes too much medication? Dad, I had no idea it had gotten this bad. You know, the other day I was talking to her on the phone and she called me Mary. I figured, you know, my voice sounds like hers and she just got us confused. I'm really glad you brought this up. Well, a month ago I wouldn't have listened to it, I wouldn't have believed it. But now I'm getting really concerned. I think we should bring a doctor into it. Okay, I'll call a neurologist. But you've got to tell her with me, because I don't want her to think that I'm calling her crazy. Yeah. Hi, Mrs. Jones. I'm Dr. Nasser. Do you know why you're here today? No, I don't know. My daughter brought me. Yeah, so I'm what's called a neuropsychologist, and I believe that you've seen some of my colleagues in neurology and had some other tests done. Today, I'm going to give you some paper and pencil type tests that look at your memory, your attention, your concentration. It will feel a little bit like school, okay? You're always a good student. <laughs> Why don't we get started? First, I'm going to say some numbers, and I want you to say them back to me. Being the caregiver may seem at times very stressful and isolating. Here are some tips to use in order to maintain a healthy frame of mind. If you're having a hard time getting your point across, try to remind your loved ones how much you care for them. Be sensitive to your parent or spouse's dilemma. Allow them the chance to breathe and make mistakes, especially when topics like depression, anxiety, or confusion come into play. Remember, that not every person is in touch with their emotions. Take pride in the wins whenever they come. Every victory is a chance for celebration and helps lift spirits. Learn what you can do about illnesses and problems so that you can deal with them as best you can. Find new ways to communicate with your partner. Don't just correct them. Live in the moment and remember that your loved one was once able to communicate with you. There may come a point where family members might not be recognized. Try appealing to your elders' emotional memory, or use music or foods that they have a connection with to help them remember emotions. Go through old pictures, help loved ones label old pictures with the names to reminisce. And finally, try to find the humor in the situation. Laughter can boost your mood and help you push through any tough time. Once you've accepted that memory impairment may actually be an issue, address it with compassion. After being diagnosed, other family members should explore different care options available to them, including home care and community care. Ask questions about the level of care a service will provide. Will activities of daily living be addressed? Is care time measured or charged by the minute, hour, or unlimited? What are the limitations of a service or community? What are the emergency procedures of a service or location? What options will provide your loved one with the best quality of life for the longest amount of time. Many memory impaired people cannot express what their needs or wishes are anymore. So it's always good to plan ahead 
and have these things documented to eliminate miscommunication and ensure the loved one is still heard. Don't forget that your loved one is still a person, even if they are not acting as they once were. They can still interact with the world and the people around them, just in a different way. Treat your loved one with dignity, respect, and a thoughtful approach, and more often than not, you will have successful interactions. Please visit the NVCC website to find members who specialize in these services. Thank you for watching. Thank you.